Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, sponsored by the National Health Association. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and I'm absolutely delighted today to have as my guest, Jane Blaise Mitchell. Jane has decades of experience in journalism and broadcast journalism. She is the founder and editor of Unchained TV, which is a global streaming network, commercial-free, advertising-free, that focuses on original content in all things vegan, vegan lifestyle, animal uh, support, environmental stuff, social documentaries, everything. And uh, she's had uh, a, a big background in, in other formats as a host of the tabloid show Celebrity Justice, where she really uh, focused on many animal issues uh, presentations and then spent six years in her own uh, program on the uh, network on CNN. Um, bottom line is uh, from that six year period, she then went on to do the Unchained work. She's also the author of four books, two of which are, are going to be interesting to me later on in our talk. One is called um, I Want Her Recovery from Addiction really recovering from addiction and overconsumption to lead a simpler, honest life. And one that's very important to me, which I really hope we get a little time to talk about, which is Addicted Nation and Intervention for America. Jane, welcome. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association, the oldest organization in the world, championing the extraordinary benefits of a whole plant food diet and healthy lifestyle as well as water-only fasting. We believe that health results from healthful living and focus on evidence-based science that promotes the health of you and your loved ones, as well as the health of all animals and the environment. We feature experts from a cross-section of disciplines within the plant nutrition, vegan, psychological, environmental, and animal compassion sectors. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, the NHA's Director of Health Education. Dr. Frank, I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You know, when I go over your resume and the stuff you've done, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit in awe, and I think that's fantastic, and I'm just happy that we're on the same team trying to spread this information to the world to help people's lives better, help animals, and help this environment. i got to tell you, there's a couple of uh, coincidences that are kind of intriguing in our lives, aside from us both being vegan. We were both brought up on the mean streets of New York City. We both went to college in, in Manhattan, me in Harlem, you in the village. I know you went to NYU. And we both had our first professional jobs in the Fort Myers area. How do you like that? What? That's amazing. <laughs> I, ran that a, amazing. I ran the Shangri-La Natural Hygiene Institute back in the late 70s, which was in Bonita Springs, just south of Fort Myers and Fort Myers Beach. So, uh, yeah, as we get into this, let me just start off with something, and then we'll because I want to really get into uh, Unchained TV. I think it's a remarkable, remarkable thing that you're doing with that. Um, many people gateway into this way of living through three areas. One, of course, could be nutrition and personal health. The other is animal rights and, of course, environmental concerns. Just give us a little background on, you know, what was your gateway into this vegetarian mindset and then eventually embracing the full vegan lifestyle? Well, I was brought up in Midtown Manhattan, right across from Carnegie Hall. My mom was from Puerto Rico. My dad was an Irish American advertising executive. My mom uh, came to New York at the height of the Great Depression, formed a Latin dance troupe called Anita Velez Dancers, was very successful uh, playing nightclubs and hotels and uh, very much that that era of uh, you know, big, per big outfits and and uh, where they actually had bands in the nightclubs and people would have dinner and dance. That was their era. My dad was also a very good ballroom dancer and that's how they met uh, because they both shared a love of dancing. And my mom, uh, when she was a child in Puerto Rico had what she thought was a companion pig as a child. And one day she came home and the pig had been slaughtered for food. She fainted. And when she came to, she was devastated and never ate meat after that. And when she came to New York and ultimately met my dad, um, she, he converted to, we thought we were vegetarian, but we really weren't. We were pescatarians. We ate dairy, we ate fish, and we ate cheese. But we never had meat in the house or steak or a chicken leg. And I grew up knowing that uh, chickens don't fall from chicken trees and hamburgers don't fall from hamburger trees. So I was on the journey. And uh, my parents were very avant-garde. Um, they were reading all sorts of 
esoteric books like Light in the Art of Mystery, Wisdom. And so they were very uh, ahead of their times in a way. And uh, so that's what started me on the journey. I didn't really grow up eating animals. Um, then as I became a journalist and I started seeing some of the horrors inflicted on animals, uh, I was like, this is morally wrong. This is just wrong. We have no reason to do it. And it's incredibly cruel. And anybody who tries to window dress the slaughter, the factory farming, raising of animals or the slaughter of animals as something that can be done nicely. First of all, there's no nice way to kill somebody who doesn't want to die, period, end of story. But secondly, the manners of raising these animals in industrialized animal agriculture and uh, killing them is just so horrific that people can't even watch five seconds of it. So uh, I became more and more active uh, as a local news reporter. Um, yes, you mentioned my uh, autobiography. First, I got sober. Then I went vegan. And then I did come out as gay. So those were I talked about my three miracles because uh, as uh, Oscar Wilde said, be yourself, everybody else is already taken. And so um, I, I really started to, once I got sober, say, you know, uh, my actions are not in alignment with my values. If I'm still eating fish, if I'm still drinking cow's milk. And uh, when I did go vegan, I was working at the Paramount Studios lot at a local news station here in LA called KCAL. And Howard Lyman, a fourth generation cattle rancher turned vegan activist who had recently been on Oprah exposing the secrets of the cattle industry, how the mothers are ripped from the babies and the babies are, the boys are often shot or left to die. They don't need the boys and they stick the the, the the mother in one place who's screaming and they take the babies and you know it's a horror show from beginning to end every mother wants to be with her baby and every baby wants to be with her mother and to, for us to steal the breast milk of another species which is really gross when you think about it we have to steal that uh, baby away from his or her mother and so again, they don't need the boys. They kill the boys or put them in veal crates. And the babies uh, eventually replace their mothers when their mothers are considered spent after a couple of years, even though a cow can live 25 years in, in uh, a sanctuary. And so Howard Lyman came up to me after I interviewed him. He was the, the guy who wrote Mad Cowboy and Exposed the Secrets. And he came up to my cubicle and he said, we hear you're a vegetarian. I said, yes. He said, do you eat dairy? And I kind of hung my head and I said, yes, because he had just revealed all these horrors. And then he said, liquid meat. And he pointed his finger right at my nose. And that's the moment I went vegan. So when people, and you know what? A month later, somebody threw some Parmesan cheese in my salad and I spat it out. I used to love Parmesan cheese, but it takes about a month to return your taste buds to their factory settings. So uh, it's, the, it's the best thing has ever happened in my life. You know, getting sober, being honest about who I am, my sexual orientation, as well as coming out uh, as vegan. <laughs> Those are the three miracles in my life. And I would recommend that everybody do it. You know, there's a, there is a comparison to getting sober when I, and you know, I was, I think a pretty high bottom. I never got a DUI, but I was a classic news lush, you know, uh, right out of the cliches. And, um, you know, I thought that I'd never have fun again if I got sober. I'd never go to a party again. I'd never karaoke again. I'd never do anything opera ski again. And that was all in my head. Uh, and it's the same thing with going plant-based or vegan, whichever word scares you the least, is that you might have all these fears in your head about you can't do this, you can't do that. It's all your projection onto the situation. None of it's true. Uh, you can do anything you do now, just like I say, Everything I can do, except for making a complete ass of myself, I can do everything sober that I used to do drunk. And I, a lot of the things that, that I did when I was drunk, I don't want to do sober. But it's the same thing with going vegan. You can, you can go to any restaurant. Uh, you, can have, you can attend any party. And guess what? You can help reverse climate change. You can lower your chance of dying of a heart attack, which is arteries clogged with plaque from cholesterol, which comes from animal products. You can lower your chance of a stroke. You can lower your chance of dementia. Now we're starting to read all sorts of articles that connect a poor diet with dementia. Because remember, when the body vessels get clogged with plaque, which is cholesterol, which comes from animal products, 
it's not just to the heart. That's the, the one that kills you or the one to the brain, but it's systemic. That's why, for example, erectile dysfunction is a precursor of heart disease. Um, so your whole body is getting clogged. And so you're doing yourself a favor. You're also um, <laughs> helping the planet because animal agriculture is the leading cause of habitat destruction, which makes it the leading cause of wildlife extinction. And we are feeding so much of our commodity crops to farmed animals that we are literally feeding, stuffing food into farmed animals while children die of starvation. There's something morally wrong with that. And we need to face the facts. Now, why don't you hear about that on mainstream television? Look at the advertisers, fast food and pharmaceuticals, the two industries that would crater if people woke up, got smart and got healthy and stopped eating this hideous food that is making us sick. And so that's why I started Unchained TV, because as a person who was in media and who did all sorts of extraordinary pretzel-like twists to get anything on my shows to, to, to say what I just said to you, which you will not hear on mainstream TV because it's verboten, okay? It's verboten. Uh, and uh, because guess who pays the bills? The advertisers, okay? I mean, the, the pharmaceutical industry is skyrocketing. They're making so much money because people are so sick. And guess what? If people were healthy, they wouldn't need all those pills. And so that's why I started Unchained TV. We have this information and it's 100% free. It's a global free nonprofit streaming network. And you can get it on your phone as an app. You just put the word Unchained TV in there. One word, Unchained TV, and it comes up absolutely for free, more than a thousand films. Uh, and it's it's truly, it's just like a CNN. I mean, there it is, Unchained TV. We don't ask for money. If you want to put your email in, you can, but if you don't, you don't have to. And you can also text all these films to people. Let's say you have a friend with heart disease, and we've got videos from great doctors about heart disease. You can just, here, check this out. You don't have to have a five hour conversation with them. You just text them a video that might help save their life. Jane, let me take a few moments here so we can hear from our sponsor, the National Health Association. I'm here with uh, Jane Velez Mitchell. We're talking about Unchained TV and we'll come back and talk a lot more about that. We're gonna just take a few seconds, a few moments to just hear from our sponsor, the National Health Association. And now to put a smile on the sponsors of the National Health Association, you're listening to the Health Science Podcast Show. I want to remind you to visit the National Health Association website, where you'll find incredible resources to support your healthy lifestyle, including plant-exclusive eating without added salt, oil, and sugar. Simply go to healthscience.org or nationalhealthassociation.org. Be sure to check out membership, which is $35 per year for those living within the U.S. and $55 for those living outside the U.S. You'll be amazed at all the information and benefits you'll receive. As a member, you're kept up to date on the latest evidence-based tools for health promotion. You'll receive the incomparable quarterly magazine, Health Science, a beautiful 40-page advertising-free publication mailed to your home or offices, loaded with articles, recipes, inspirational stories, and interviews with world leaders in the fields of personal health, plant-based nutrition, water-only fasting, animal rights, and environmental support. And you'll receive details about life-changing events, such as the 2023 NHA conference set for June 23 to the 25th, 2023, in Cleveland, Ohio, which will be the NHA 75th annual NHA conference. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and now back to the show. Welcome back to the Health Science Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino. You know, it's interesting. Howard Lyman is a good friend of the, of the National Health Association. I got to meet him uh, sometime in the past when we were doing a conference together, and that was a great influence in your life. Jane, let me ask you something. I, I know you have talked about the fact, just I want to just touch on this briefly, that you had already been on the path of sobriety before you became vegan. So vegan actually happened when you already had done some of the work you needed to do to get sober. But I wanna ask you in terms of the resources that helped you stay on that path, 
how would you assess the contribution that being on a plant-based or, or a vegan lifestyle, did it make some positive impact that reinforced your sobriety in any way? Well, I think that everything is connected. And uh, I had clarity when I got sober. I mean, I could sit there and go, you know, but that's not going to change the world. That's not going to help the world. And when I got sober, I had clarity. And I started realizing, you know, I like to think of myself as a good person. I like to think of myself as somebody who doesn't commit violence or hurt uh, another being. So even though I had not grown up eating meat, I did eat fish. I'll never forget thinking back on how I thought it was okay to eat crabs. And I had, I went to this restaurant and I was hitting these crabs and the shells. And now I look back in horror that that was me. Okay. Uh, because I didn't have the consciousness. So I guess you might say I woke up. And so it's no accident that after I got sober, I was able to uh, put my values into action. And that's really what it's all about. I mean, there's a lot of people running around, you know, talking peace and love and do everything with love, but yet they are committing violence three times a day. And they don't have to, it's hurting them too. I just read an article about diet and suppression. And there's growing evidence that your gut biome determines your serotonin levels and your serotonin levels determine to a large degree your mood. And when you're eating crappy food from fast food restaurants, which is primarily a meat and dairy laden diet, you know how we fight like heck to get a vegan burger in there, uh, sometimes without success. Um, so you're going to be impacted by that. If you eat that kind of food, it's going to, uh, translate into, uh, your mood. And, uh, we know that not only is obesity rampant in the society, but depression is rampant in the society. And so we have a solution. The reason I started Unchained TV, and by the way, you can get it online. You can just go to unchainedtv.com and click watch now. Cause some people go, Oh, my phone, you know, okay. Just go to unchainedtv.com and click watch. Now, if you have a smart TV, like an Apple TV device or a Roku device or an Amazon fire stick, you can also get it there. And in a couple of months, we're going to be available on all Samsung televisions. So we're growing rapidly. We're adding uh, content constantly. Like literally we have 50 videos in the queue, some of them about health. Um, a lot of them about health that, that I have to upload today after this is done. And, uh, so, you know, the reason we're doing this is that we have the solution to 90, at least 90% of the world's problems. And it's, I was listening to this book about business during the pandemic. I would walk around listening to audible, and listening to all these books. And I decided to listen to this series about business because now I was always on camera talent and a reporter. Now I'm managing and I have to learn some of those things, management skills. And this guy who's a renowned author said, there is usually in a corporation, one underlying false assumption that creates most of their problems. And that he, his specialty is he would go into these businesses and they would have supply chain issues and blah, blah issues and stocking issues and this, that, and the other. And he'd find that one underlying problem and he'd remove it. And all of a sudden everything else would fall into place and the business would improve. That's what he was famous for. And as I was listening to that, I thought that's our society right now. There is one underlying false assumption that is at the root and the heart of most societal problems. And that is for us to live somebody's got to die, namely a pig or a cow or a chicken or a turkey or a goat or a lamb. That is the false underlying assumption that has created almost all of our problems. Now that sounds like a really big statement, right? And you're not going to hear that on mainstream media ever, probably. But the reason I say that is, okay, we're in a climate crisis. And the United Nations years ago, uh, wrote something called Livestock's Long Shadow, where they stated flat out that animal agriculture is responsible for more greenhouse gases than all transportation combined. So everybody's talking about Teslas and talking about electric cars, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but animal agriculture is responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than all transportation combined. 
the UN said it. And then there was a group um, from the uh, a very reputable organization that said they're underestimating it. Okay, it's even worse than that. Now we can quibble with the figures because it's a very big problem, and it depends on how you calculate it. For example, if you don't if you don't include the lost opportunities, then you're going to have a much lower figure. For example, you know we've we've really given the planet Earth a buzz cut to grow crops and to create cattle grazing land. Nobody disputes that most of the Amazon's being destroyed for cattle grazing, okay? And who's eating that meat? Americans. So you you, you have this tragic situation where you have quote unquote environmentalists beating their chests about the Amazon, the Amazon. When they're eating a hamburger, they're the ones who, who are destroying the Amazon by their choices. So um, we've given planet Earth a buzz cut, okay, in order to grow commodity crops to feed 80 billion land animals we raise and kill for food every year. I want to say it again because I always ask people when they go, oh, well, you know, I care about people, not animals. And I said, well, I care about people too, especially starving children who don't have food because we're feeding 80 billion animals. Meat is the most inefficient food source. You can quibble about the numbers again. Is it five pounds to make five pounds of grain and other commodity crops to make a pound of beef? Is it 10? Is it 25? Depends on what kind of meat. Okay. But obviously an animal eating constantly, which is what they do. They keep them confined because what happens when you move around, you burn calories. They keep them in, in crates, pig gestation crates. Pigs are kept in crates the size of their bodies, never able to turn around. Obviously, they're eating more food than they would produce as meat. Use an analogy. Let's say we were cannibals and we decided, oh, we're going to take Jane and we're going to cut her up. We're going to take out her bones and her eyeballs and her hair and her toenails. And we're just going to slice everything up and put it in little cellophane wrappers. Don't you think I would have eaten more than I would have produced as food? Of course. It's the same thing with animals. And so we're feeding them all this food while people are starving. And we're also destroying the habitat in the process. And that means that we're destroying all the wildlife that lives on that habitat. That's why we are barreling toward a climate apocalypse that involves widespread species extinction. We have replaced wildlife with farmed animals. Wildlife is down to something like 4% of biomass, whereas the farmed animals have just taken over the planet. And so what happens when that happens? Trees absorb carbon. Trees absorb carbon. Trees absorb carbon. As you destroy the forest to create cattle grazing land and to grow crops to feed those animals, you are destroying the planet's ability to absorb carbon. That accelerates climate change. We cannot solve the climate crisis without addressing food. And if you consider yourself an environmentalist, if you would like to see your children or grandchildren have a planet that's livable, you can do something three times a day to reverse climate change. And that is eat a low emissions price tag diet. And the United Nations has acknowledged this. At one of the cops, I think it was cop whatever, or COP27, they keep having them. Of course, they're all eating meat there. Well, the Washington Post, which is no vegan organization by any means, did an article that said, wait a second, you're putting the carbon price tag on all the food items you're selling here at this environmental conference. Well, the meat has such a higher carbon price tag than the rare few vegan options. Why did you even serve the meat? And that was what the Washington Post asked. So the hypocrisy is mind boggling. But let me tell you something. If you are worried about climate change and you continue to eat meat and dairy products, you're not going to be a victim when whatever happens, happens. You're going to be a participant. So I'd love to show you a little bit about what Unchained TV offers. Uh, I would love to share the screen and thank you for letting me do so. 
here you are. You can go to watch.unshadetv.com forward slash browse, and you can check out this incredible interview with uh, Nicole Dershue. She won a cooking contest. She's now launching a vegan lox. And uh, so we have a lot of health and fitness content, content like, you know, everybody is struggling with their weight. Check this out. I mean, wouldn't you like to uh, have the body that this guy has? I coach, I train, I've been vegan since 1998, and I'm here for the planet, the animals, and the betterment of humanity. <laughs> so look at that, man. I don't think you could uh, suggest that he's not fit. And just while we're talking about fitness, did you know that one of the world's strongest men, Patrick Baboobian, well, is also animals. vegan? Deadlift, 360 kilos, three reps. Yoke walk, 550 kilos for 10 meters. 6,000 calories a day, 350 grams of protein a day, eight meals, three hours of training, four times a week. All right. In fact, I interviewed that guy and he picked me up literally and just tossed me over his shoulder and like walked around. It was so much fun. Um, we also, you know, cover developments involving celebrities. Uh, many of you know Moby. So we got is, Moby here for the plant. We face a climate emergency and especially a methane emergency. We need to strike a global agreement about a shift to a plant-based food system this year at COP26. We're on track to hit 1.5 centigrade warming around 2030 and 2 centigrade warming around 2040. This would lead to catastrophic climate impacts such as increased heat waves, more intense hurricanes, wildfires, droughts, food shortages, violent weather patterns, sea level rise, climate refugees, coral bleachings, and the ongoing mass extinction of thousands, tens of thousands, millions of species. We need to address all three greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Our biggest chance of limiting temperature rises in the next 25 years is cutting methane. The Paris so there you go. Um, there's a lot of great information. Now, uh, we also did something called Pig Little Lies, which uh, uh, was our original, the world's first reality series starring pig. And that's just the intro to Pig Little Lies. I hope you check it out. By the way, that was picked up. Uh, it's going to be on public television stations around the United States and Canada. And we recently just got all these wildlife films um, that are absolutely fantastic. In fact, I just interviewed Baruti Mary Galdikas, who is right up there with Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall for... Um, rescuing and studying the great apes. Uh, we uh, talk about this rhino rescue, big cat rescue, which is Carol Baskin made famous in uh, Tiger Kings and uh, Friends of Bonobos as well. So we've got a lot of nature documentaries. We've got really exciting documentaries like Lion Ark. Again, this is all free, 100% free. I don't take a salary. I do this all simply to spread the word Encourage compassion, save the planet. Check this out for a second, because this is one of our more successful videos as well. As is so often the case, it takes just a small group of people coming together to make a difference. The Carioca say he's going to kill them. 
You see an animal do this, it's so sad. She wasn't meant to be kept like this. Never, never in my life I saw so much pain in the animal. If our kids knew how cruel and violent these events were, I think they'd actually be very disappointed in us. And how do they train them? They beat them. Our goal is going to be change everything. Olivia now has the most progressive law on our services in the world. This is the bit where it gets dangerous. This circus, I think, Chimora has obviously got wind of the fact that we're coming. The minute we catch him with an animal, we're going to call the police and he's going to jail. He was chained up in a big top and now they're up in the trees. We keep him tied in the car. He's got like freedom in his sight. Anyway, you want to see it, you have to watch it on Unchained TV for free. And guess what? There's a happy ending. All right. So I think you've gotten a nice little uh, potpourri. Uh, I can tell you we have many, many categories. We also do cover lecture series, um, which uh, are really for those who want the in-depth information on the details regarding climate change. The European Vegan Summit, for example, features uh, top people who are, are doing amazing, amazing work. So we did New Day, New Chef, 20 episodes. We won two taste awards and uh, it was done by Eamon McChrystal, a great Emmy winning producer. I collaborated with him, but uh, I was a co-host and we had a lot of celebrities on the show. Uh, even Billie Eilish did a cameo because we did a whole, uh, about six episodes regarding her mother, Maggie Baird's uh, campaign called Support and Feed, which uh, started up during the pandemic. She raised funds, gave them to vegan restaurants. The vegan restaurants made um, food and then Support and Feed, Maggie Baird distributed them to people who were houseless and who were hungry. And that was just an incredible, incredible campaign. We were so honored to be a part of it. Um, we had a lot of great cooking competitions. I don't think you'll ever see a cooking show like this. At one point we had this yoga master who literally did a handstand on the stove. <laughs> we were all like in shock. I couldn't believe it. Uh, in the past, we know in the United States, you brought this up before, People are taking 30% of their calories from animal products and 55% from junk food. So every day they're participating in this kind of ritual of violence and creating situations where food that's engineered to create addiction in their brains is, is really what's laying the groundwork for what you called an addicted nation. Are there, is there programming based on your past history and your success on, on Unchained TV addressing that, that story of addiction that actually has gotten much worse from the time you published your book in 2011. We try to stay focused on, uh, the, it's such a big topic. As I said, it connects to everything. I keep adding categories and there's only so many categories I can add before I go off a cliff. Right. So just the other day we added a, a religion category, which we're changing to religion and spirituality because there's a, a big connection there, obviously. I mean, all religions, the the fundamental principle uh, is nonviolence, you know, coexist. Don't be, don't be bad. Don't be mean. Don't be a, a, an evil person. And that's the es essence of all religions when you break them down. So we've really seen, there's like a, a film called The Prayer for Compassion. We're about to get another film about uh, connecting uh, Hinduism. And uh, certainly there's connections to Buddhism. So there's that. And we also are expanding to include composting, recycling, uh, because there's a lot of people who are very well-meaning, who are composting and recycling, but they haven't gotten the memo yet on just stop eating animals. And, uh, you know, this whole thing about eggs, this is, we live in a carnist society. So I just watched a whole thing on TV the other night on a major news channel about <gasps> the rising price of eggs, how terrible. You know, eggs are cholesterol bombs and cholesterol uh, leading to heart disease. OK, heart disease is the leading killer in the United States. So why are we so upset that a massive contributor to cholesterol, which leads to heart disease, is becoming more expensive? Now, if, if this was a fair news media society, we'd say, should we be eating eggs in the first place? What the 
the menstrual period of a chicken. Okay. Uh, it's gross to me. Uh, yes, I did eat eggs when I was growing up, but then once I found that out, I was like, yeah. And so, uh, they discuss this whole issue of the rising price of eggs, not mentioning, or if they do glossing over the fact that avian flu is a major reason why, and all these animals are being killed in mass form in incredibly, incredibly cruel methods called depopulation, depopulation methods, where they literally bake these animals to death and they writhe to death. Um, there was just an article in Wired about how pigs are slaughtered because a very brave woman, and I just interviewed her this week, Raven Deerbrook, and uh, we are in the process of editing a story on her. She found out that the Farmer John Slaughterhouse near downtown LA is closing down. She put on a worker's outfit, infiltrated the slaughterhouse, and planted cameras in the gas chamber, okay, where these animals are suffocated. Uh, the carbon dioxide, they call it a stunning chamber. The video that she produced is so horrific that a group of veterinarians have signed an open letter saying this must end. Okay, where was the USDA, which is supposed to be monitoring all this? She saw no evidence of USDA cameras inside the gas chamber. And uh, you can go to stopgaschambers.org if you want to get involved with that. If this horrifies you, and I got to tell you, the footage is so horrible. Uh, a philanthropist hired a truck to drive around Los Angeles and show people and let them hear the screams, the hysterical screams of these pigs as they're, as they're suffocating. Okay. You know, you do it yourself. Just hold your breath for four minutes and see how you feel. Okay. And people, I was there videotaping as the truck went through Santa Monica. People are like this running through trying to get away from the truck as fast as they can. See no evil, hear no evil. And those same people might be going and having a hamburger or excuse me, a hot dog or a deli slice and that it comes from a pig who is killed as a baby, only six months old. These are babies that are being tortured to death. Like what is wrong with our society? And you know what? It comes back to haunt us because pigs generally go into processed meat. Okay, whether it's deli slices or a hot dog, guess what? Processed meat is officially cancer causing according to the World Health Organization. So we're torturing pigs. We're killing ourselves with cancer and heart disease. We're destroying the planet. We are contributing to starvation by children in third world countries. And we are contributing to deforestation. And we are barreling toward a climate apocalypse. The clock is ticking. I actually did a, a documentary, which is also on, I get overexcited and I turn on my app. <laughs> um, I also did a documentary called Countdown to Year Zero, which says we have to transition to a plant-based society by 2026, or we will have burst through all of the boundaries after which we cannot return. And it's not me saying that we have boundaries that we are crashing through. Sir David Attenborough did an incredible documentary. I believe it's on Netflix. I believe it's called Breaking Boundaries. But we are crashing through. It's like the, the destruction of the rainforest, the collapse of the glaciers, all of these things. Once they're done, there's no turning back. And there's a very easy solution. And it's simply to stop eating animals and their byproducts. And it, it is frustrating where you have this solution and nobody who has these incredibly powerful platforms will give you the time of day because they're advertiser based and the advertisers are, those companies are the problem. But that's why we decided instead of trying to constantly beg for a moment on some regular TV show where they really don't tell the story anyway. It's like a 30 second thing. And then you're like, but, 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 but we're going to take the power back. We're going to create our own streaming network. Streaming recently surpassed broadcasting cable as the number one way that Americans are uh, absorbing television. And the number one search term is free. And we offer all of our content for free, for free. And we are uh, donation based. So if you like this idea, Download Unchained TV. You can do it right on your phone. Again, you don't have to, or you could 
you could watch it on your TV through UnchainedTV.com, or you can download it on your Amazon Fire Stick. You know, I have Amazon Fire Stick. It's right up there, right next to HBO. Uh, yeah, and you can visit it over and over again. And please donate to us too, because we are completely donor based. I do not take a salary. I donate to my own nonprofit. I'm doing this for one reason and one reason only. If I were to sit around and just, you know, I live near the beach and just go to the beach and read a trashy novel and, and eat some vegan chocolates, which is something I'd probably like to do. But then on my deathbed, I said, you know, I could have done more. I could have done something to stop what happened because we are going to have an unlivable planet if we don't change already. Okay. You're hearing about UPS workers fainting in the summertime. And imagine those poor pigs in open air trucks during the current cyclone bomb on the East Coast where there is extreme cold going to slaughter. Millions of them show up frozen to death. What would Jesus say? What would Buddha say? I mean, I don't care what your religion is. There is something really wrong with this morally wrong and we just need to acknowledge it it's not the people i don't nobody blames the drivers or the slaughterhouse workers who are the lowest rung of society who often have no choice for what job they're going to have uh they're not at fault they're they're victims too in fact we're all being factory farmed Everybody who buys these products is being factory farmed. Jane, you know what? I'm, I'm going to chime in here for a second because the bottom line is I want to give a shout out to what's going on here because, as you know, there's been such an erosion of confidence in information as it's been disseminated from every strata of society. So people sit there not knowing what's real, fake news, all of this, because of the fact that it's being filtered by these conglomerates and their hidden agendas. So places like this, where you have Unchained TV, that becomes a voice without the intervention of those hidden agendas is essential to the survival of the society and the species and everything that you're talking about. And so I just uh, kudos to you and to this whole process. Let me ask you a question. When people have ideas, do they pitch ideas? Do you get involved in production of things other than preformed uh, programs that already come to you? How does that work in terms of the production? Well, we're always being invited to things, but we have a very small, we don't have a staff, to be honest with you. Sometimes people look at our post office box, which is connected to a building, and they think that's our building. Like, I can't tell you how many times people have your IT team reach out to, you know, it's hilarious to me. But um, I'm doing uh, I, a lot of different hats, and we have a very small but dedicated team of volunteers. And uh, we cover as much as we can. For example, um, I went earlier this week down to Farmer John, which is closing down uh, in large part uh, due to all the protests and the visuals that happened there. Uh, and so I did a story on that. I also interviewed the woman who went into uh, Farmer John undercover and risked her own life placing those hidden cameras in the transmitters uh, in the area of the uh, gas chamber and uh, really actually thought she was going to die for uh, a few tense minutes there where she started losing her breath because there was residual CO2 uh, in the area. And what that does is it's like you die of suffocation. So she ended up like scrambling up and she's told me she has nightmares ever since. And I can imagine because I only watched like 45 seconds of the video and I was like, I'm embarrassed to be a member of the human race. But, um, you know, we've covered that. We're going to do a four part series on the closing of the slaughterhouse. I'm going to be going back tomorrow night to shoot some stand ups and to catch some of the final uh, moments as the activists there beg for one pig, one symbolic pig to be released. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Jane, as we wind this down, do you have any final words or information you'd like to share with our audience before we go? Well, I'd just like to share that, you know, uh, there's, I don't blame anybody. You know, I had the good fortune of growing up with people who, while they weren't vegan, they were very aware of, we don't want to eat animals. 
You know, uh, animals are beings that have uh, eyes and a heart and they dream just like your dog dreams. Okay. These animals dream. Uh, and why would we want to eat them? And so I, I had a leg up because of that upbringing. So I don't blame people who have grown up, you know, being indoctrinated that this is the way it has to happen. Most kids don't want to eat meat. They're forced by their misguided parents to eat it. And then they develop a taste for it. Um, but I would say, uh, please just check out the information on Unchained TV. You know, we'd like to think that humans can't go extinct. I'm sure the dinosaurs felt they couldn't go extinct either, but they did. If it becomes too hot to support life on this planet, if the temperatures and the weather become too extreme to support life on this planet, we could go extinct. At the very least, we could see an escalation of the extreme weather we're already starting to see, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse, and the impacts are going to be absolutely unmanageable. And I'd like to say that I think that's how animal agriculture is going to end, ultimately. I talked to a sanctuary owner in Texas who knows cattle ranchers. They're sending their animals to market. The feed's getting more expensive because as the climate change gets worse, guess what happens? Crop failure crop failure. And as crop failure increases, it's going to be harder to feed 80 billion animals. You're going to have to decide, do you want a glass of water or a hamburger? Do you want to have something to eat? Because this inefficient food source is absolutely unsustainable. So I do have hope. The question is, will we make the transition in time? And that's why I urge everybody just to download Unchained TV. I want to thank our special guest today, Jane Velez Mitchell, for really sharing this incredible information um, that is actually life-saving for everyone, animals, and the planet. And I encourage you, I urge you to go to Unchained TV. Um, the information on that site will be even in our show notes. And I want to especially thank our viewers today, because without you, none of this would be possible. And I really thank you for being part of this active community and I thank you on behalf of the National Health Association. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Health Science Podcast. You've been listening to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association. Thank you for joining us today and for your commitment to evidence-based health science that backs a whole food, plant-exclusive lifestyle and contributes to the well-being of all people, animals, and our environment. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino. Be sure to leave a rating and a review, and we'll see you on the next show.